Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. A couple of dates for the Cartoonist Kayfabe Nation out there. October 28th to the 30th, you can find us at Baltimore Comic Con. That is a great three-day show for comic book fans and the the birthplace of Cartoonist Kayfabe from 2018. Uh, you can catch me October 22nd at Jacksonville Public Library for a comic and zine festival. It is Cartoonist Kayfabe Tober, and here are our drawing prompts. The month is underway, so if you decide to draw these, make sure you tag us on Instagram or Twitter so that we can share your artwork with the uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe followers who aren't artistically inclined. Been enjoying what I've seen from this so far. And we are working cartoonists. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy our comics. Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness is in comic shops now as comic books. The Oversized Treasury Edition will be in shops in January 2023. You can pre-order that now wherever you get comics. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive from Image Comics. Collecting all of my full color Street Angel series plus a few extra stories is back in print after almost a year away. So pick that one up whenever you hit your comic shop next. Ed Piscor's Red Room Trigger Warnings. The second season of Red Room is available now wherever books and comics are sold. Although it is a second volume in the Red Room series, these stories are completely self-contained. They can be read in any order, plus a lot of really cool back matter in each volume. So whether it's the antisocial network or trigger warnings that you find first, either place is a perfect place to start on Ed Piscor's Red Room. And today's comic... Bernie Moreau's The Jam. Yeah, how much did Chris Pitcher pay you to uh, do this episode? <laughs> you know what, man? This is uh, one of the first like black and white indie comics that I got hold of. It is a superhero comic, so it made like that transition really easy. And it was just a comic that it appealed to me. As we go through it, I'll point out why. But uh, off air, we've talked about this series a little bit, Ed. And it's kind of rough around the edges. You know, It was one of those things as I'm moving closer to making my own comics and looking for comics that make sense to me jam really fit in that and uh i think that's true probably for a lot of people because um that was my joint right there <laughs> here's my jam collection and you can see already this is published by matrix graphics slave labor kamiko in color no less a uh, a rarity for comics of this time period tundra picks up and reprints this original slg series in the early 90s also in full color. It goes to Dark Horse. Yeah, about 15 issues. It goes to Caliber. And uh, eventually we get a crossover with Mike Allred's Madman. So a series that had a lot of legs for being, you know, a black and white explosion uh, indie kind of comic series from the 80s. Yeah, he was a really respected cartoonist of that period, man. He, he, he drew, you know, homework runs of Grendel comics. Uh, had some knowledge of how color over at Kamiko worked. He did work with uh, with Mike Allred. They they sh they shared an anthology, like a Love and Rockets type uh, anthology that was more toward the Rockets than the Love. Uh, the dude, like if you're if you get a Tundra book, like I like I like Kevin Eastman's eyes. I like his sensibility, the stuff that he likes. So, so and I pay attention when Kevin Eastman likes somebody because it's it's usually in my wheelhouse. So this guy, this guy had respect from uh, within the comics game. I think he was probably like considered like a, a, a cartoonist, cartoonist kind of kind of character, uh, like during during that time period, man. Yeah, I think that's right. And in my head, I remembered this as being. I read this back in the '90s. I remember this being kind of a, you know, a black and white, kind of funny, kind of a parody of superhero comics. When I went back through it this week, I was really impressed with composition yeah. with how much he's building like one of the cool things is all the screen tones and effects that he's putting on these pages like this is not a dashed off comic like this is a guy that has a lot of skills but maybe not that traditional marvel comics type jobber skills yeah like, and really pays it off in this you know like, it's a lot of good design on display hewlett has drawings that looks like that yes you know like he's got he's got chops no no doubt man. fun lettering stuff He's, little flourishes. He's a full-on cartoonist. Like he'll use panel borders to to uh, to good effect with certain things, man. Uh, he's definitely he he is a cartoonist. He's he's a fully formed cartoonist. Uh, the flow of his dialogue, I think he chooses his word choice and syntax flows really nice. It's a it's a it's highly readable. You know, there's no confusion. Uh, it's it's pleasing. It has the rhythm and the beats of conversations in there feels like 
ahead of its time, to be honest, man, because uh, it gives you just what you need. And I see people like, even like a Garth Ennis, like try to have that kind of back and forth with their with. I think his that's characters. a lot of what spoke to me early on because I hadn't seen any comics that did that it had something resembling a natural dialogue back and forth between a couple of people. And I think that that was stuff that really spoke to me, and I couldn't quite square it. Yeah. I didn't have enough range to recognize where this stuff fell to compare it to Jamie Hewlett or something. In my mind, I looked at this and went, cartoony, not image guys. Even though I was moving away from them, that was still sort of a certain standard that I, that I held in high regard and did not have a good way to quantify this. All I knew is I read it and liked it enough that like when I saw more Jam comics, I bought them. Yeah, But I couldn't maybe explain to you why as well as hopefully we can explain today. So this is a subplot that you'll see come back up. This is the main stuff that got to me, right? It's it's this homemade superhero going out and making a sandwich and sitting on top of the uh, the building at night, I guess, looking for crime. Yeah, it's, a, it's that era, man. There's 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 this. There's um, you know, flaming carrot. Bob Burden is a guy, and like Matt Howarth. Like like I put I put those guys like in this very '80s specific time period that like. It feels right in that time period, and it does. There's there's a there's a dated component, but I think the person who aged the best is probably uh, Bem. I was going to. Uh, I, I probably read this around the same time as I got hold of Tick, you mm. know. So it fit in that world for me of like the funny superheroes, uh, yeah. Along with the black and white stuff, and what happens before he can even get to his sandwich and his beer is he hears a disturbance, a guy yelling for help across the building way, and uh, you see one dude is being held over the building by a rope by another guy, and uh, man, things are threatening to get out of hand pretty quickly here. Jam sneaks over and ties the back end of the rope up to something on the roof, so whenever this guy lets him go, it keeps him from dying, which is what would have happened there. Like, Pretty intense. Like, this guy is a murderer, even though he doesn't actually murder the guy. For all intents and purposes, now Jam's going to go talk to this dude who just attempted murder in front of him. Giving him a second shot. But see, how great is this effect? He drops him off the side of the building, and suddenly the rope snaps taut. You get a lettering effect. You get a visual in the middle of it, and there's even a little bit of screen tone on the T overlapping the O. He's a very thoughtful maker of comics. There there's are a no lot doubt. of these compositions that work for me big time. Like, here's our silhouette in the foreground, framing, framing the jammer as he shows up. The rope snapping, you know, with the little motion lines on either side. Is that thing, like, tongs? <laughs> yeah, you can picture it. It's It's... It's good cartooning. It's effective visuals. This panel in particular stands out to me as one of the great compositions. That rope going across the panel as we see these guys talking about what exactly happened. What did this guy do to you? And we have this rope as like creating the tension and exactly what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he's he's got the the sort of bare like like the fundamentals down for sure. But places where like. The, like a like a Hewlett succeeds and stuff is like that just feel, feel more like a rope you know like that feels very flat the drapery will be better so he's good at a lot like he could put together comics and they're highly readable and they're nice but like there's you know how Klaus would ring like they would talk about that like last five percent like he doesn't do that if 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 he did that extra five percent and kind of like soften like polish off a couple of things it could be you know, comics that everybody's talking about to this day. I wonder how early on this is. This might even be before he does his Grendel runs. You know, like, this could be his first comics. Yeah. Because this is, like, 80... I think the very beginning ones are, like, 84 or yeah. something like that. So it's definitely, like, a young... You know, pretty young in his in his game. And because they're reprinted over and over and in different forms, it's hard to tell where they start. But this is a fairly old... This is a three-panel comic strip to me, is great yeah and him doing those compositions is what speaks to me the most because mm -hmm. finish is finish like you know that's a style argument in a lot of ways but just from a compositional standpoint i feel like this is a great three panel sequence and again you get your lettering worked into that composition where it's like that's a big chunk of, of what appeals to me about his work yeah yeah and it's it's the style part that makes you not a car cartoonist cartoonist and i think like his his art sort of stayed at the same level like forever like he hit a certain level and and like that's where he is that's where he's comfortable maybe it grows a little bit but it it always has the same kind of vibe to me i'll be honest i haven't read any of his other stuff yeah jam's all i've read of his um silhouette very uh overly dramatic silhouette of eating the sandwich but look at the screen tones you yeah. know like none of it is uh this is a young 
cartoonist enthusiastically going after these pages with the tools that he has at hand. Playing multiple bells and whistles. Multiple screen screen tones in one pan in a panel of a guy eating a sandwich. A little spatter. Yeah. Making pages, man. You gotta make this black and white look interesting. Yeah, and I, I think he does. I like his lettering. Again, you see it on, on pretty good display here. This is almost out of the movie Cobra. Your uh, <laughs> your fanatics that are trying to to attack and rule the world. And as we move on with our A story, Jam and the murder would be murderer talks him off the uh, rooftop and uh, let's go get a drink. But I guess I shouldn't skip over this head trauma. The guy who's coming up is, has a gun. Yeah. The, the tough brother-in-law shooting at him drops a brick on his head <laughs> and is like, "All right, let's go out and have a good time." This was the other part that for me I had never seen comics like this, and now it's more. You know, you see this every version of superheroes at this point. I've seen every version of superheroes. Show me something new with superheroes. But back then, I hadn't seen this kind of stuff. Like, you're just going to take your mask off. It's like a hooded sweatshirt. And now you can just go hang out and get a get a hamburger and a beer at the bar. Totally different. This, um, I thought this was a really effective, another one of those, like, how do you make a page interesting? And you see it in letter variations, but also just in playing with shapes, like having a silhouette panel with an arrow that's moving you up and down through the page. Yeah, it helps along, man, because, you know, you want to read this and you're being instructed not to. I think this is an older comic, too, based on some of the reprints that I have. But I think this is one of the Jam's first adventures where he rescues this lady who's being mugged on the street and ends up with her business card. That's a thing. Give me, uh, maybe it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, the ricochet graphics or whatever the fuck uh it's it's not he 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 redraws it like oh yeah see it, this, this comic is, is from 1984 okay perfect and like you could certainly look at the panels where where he's um gets the card and, and oh yeah this is awesome so jam's trying to break this thing up and how do you do it he takes three pages and turns it into one page on the redraw, uh -huh. which I, I got to admire. But it's the same kind of gimmick, right? Like he comes comes around the corner yelling, what are you doing to my mother to try to scare these muggers away? It's Keep that line. That's one that he was obviously happy with. Uh, but to condense all of that into one page, pretty fun on the redraw. Sure, sure, yeah. You can also see just the level of cartooning, I think, improving oh, sure. by the time he's redrawing. A more economic line maybe a little bit more control over his materials and a little more varied page layout. And obviously this is setting up for 20 issues worth of, of jam comics that follow through all sorts of different publishers, uh, passing off the card for a future investigator. Whenever he calls her up to, uh, to cash in on this card, oh, yeah. he ends up hearing all kinds of stuff coming from her end of the phone, which scares him away which I think is a subplot for future issues. Not not one that I got into very far along, but I think it is a good setup in Dis that regard. Discreet investigations. That's the thing, like, when, when you when you, uh, you watch movies and stuff about PIs and shit, and it's, like, solving crimes and stuff, but it's really, like, gross people paying you to spy on, like, spouses. Yes. Or, like, insurance stuff and, and try to catch a spouse cheating so that you can get you know, maximum clause from your fucking uh, prenuptial agreement. You know, you could put a clause on them and get half their loot or whatever. So continuing on with some of this stuff, the old lady whose card he got yes. eventually calls him a couple days later, which freaks him out. And I find this part interesting in the line variation, because if you look at like the way the mouth and stuff is drawn, it's a really awkward, wrong word. It's a, like you're pressing on a pen tip really hard. It's, it's that line variation that I would associate almost with some of Miller's stuff, like on some of the Electra comics and things, where he's kind of inking with an adventurous line. You see some of that here. So again, it's kind of playing with this stuff. And the, uh, the original Jam first special, he's going out and heading back to his apartment. Again, it's truncating a lot of this story into a couple of pages. So he's keeping some of these beats, like his girlfriend living at his apartment, picking up a pizza on his way home after foiling a mugger. The mugger stuff gets edit it out in the uh, redo but the pizza comes through and you get to see his apartment building which 
some pretty good uh, creators and Batman himself uh, living there maybe as a safe house. And it's kind of cheesy shit. Like, yes. Like that, that's a staple of like that, that Bob Bird in type totally, shit. Totally, totally. It's such an 80s, like even some of the turtle stuff, I feel like we see some of that in the Eastman Laird, little, uh, little nods to their influences. I'm going to talk about that occupied. Yeah. So that's basically our jam number one. It's alternative comics. Like he's coming out of, I think, Toronto scene. Mm -hmm. So like there'll be thanks in some of these to like Joe Matz. And, you know, like I, I, oh, I think sense. it's a a relatively small scene. That makes um, sense. Because Joe, cause Joe Matt would, would go to um, Kamiko as well working on uh, Grendel. He would color the he, – maybe he colored the Bernie Merlot um, Grendels. Yeah, it's possible. Although I think I swore Bernie Moreau did that. I thought so too. Um, but I do remember Joe Matt doing some some coloring for that kind of stuff. But it's just this '80s like it's a small scene. '80s black and white comics. You know, there there aren't that many uh, publishers of that material. Yeah, in fact, they're sharing ad space. Oh, this is this is a, like a store or something. Because I was like, you got two. Oh no, that's that's Mark Kempel. I thought that's not Roberta Gregory, but. Mm. You know, you got a Fantagraphics, you got a Vortex. That's a San Jose store, World mm -hmm. of Fantasy, which is uh, your slave labor home city. So that's probably SLG selling that. But you also see, like, the Jam T-shirts, which was the other staple of, like, you do a self-published comic, you own your character, you, you merchandise it to the best of your abilities. So yeah, T-shirts were common. You make more money. Yeah, and look, I mean, like, the, the ad is just handwritten. Love it. Yes. It's such a time period. Dude. And finding this stuff whenever I'm probably like 14 and trying to figure out how to make comics, like, this stuff was huge. That shit was, a, um, that was an assignment at the Qbert School, dude. Like, making a faux ad for a t-shirt. Like, that was like a, an assignment we had to do. We're like, you know, go to the, um, you do an illustration, go to the Xerox machine, fucking reduce it down, use a reduction wheel. Fucking draw the t-shirt, draw the coupon, like, create the dotted lines, like, like all that stuff. It, that was, like, a whole, like, week's worth of assignment for a design class or something. That's bizarre. Like, in 2000, in the late 90s, early 2000s? That's why I went one year, man, because I'm like, fuck, you guys are going to make us go here for three years until you teach us the shit that could get us a job. I see. You want us to be in debt for 30 grand before... We can learn anything to apply to a professional practice. Because you kind of wonder, like, this is this is cool. I love seeing this stuff, and I like the idea that you could self-publish or you could have your own character and you could sell a T-shirt if you wanted to. But how? I mean, how many of these are you actually selling? You know, oh, is this dude, lucrative? Ain't you so glad that it's not that day where we got keep inventory and then you got to do some smalls and 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 fuck we all know that it's the x xl xxl and sometimes xxxls are the ones that sell and so like that's a lot of fabric you know that's taking up a footprint in your house you know the smart move here he's selling this through mind game in massachusetts mm. this must have been maybe connected to like Eastman Laird Turtle Headquarters or something that it's coming out of Massachusetts, you know, like other businesses that yeah. perhaps sprung up as cartoonists start to maybe congregate right in Northampton. That, and that could be that could be just like uh, you know Commonwealth Press down, down in uh, Carson Street and Southside. Like you have a local T-shirt company. I mean, there's a Silk especially Street in the right states because that's what I was thinking was he's going to have to ship these all out of Canada if he's doing the shipping himself. Right. So it would behoove you to have like a connection in the states because I assume that's where this book ultimately sold the majority of its copies uh, in America, so you probably want to be able to ship out of an American address as well. But it's that snapshot. This is your 80s black and white. This was my model, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of ways as to, like, like what labor. can I actually do myself? Yeah, like, like really, it, it becomes my model. You know, it's funny. I think even Street Angel started $1.95. Really? Um, That's 15, cheap. 15 years later. I think so. I, can't I, I bet you it's $2.95. Yeah, it's probably $2.95. But, yeah, I mean, SLG, the first publisher of Street Angel... So they had a long run, you know. They probably had twenty good years. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, like, like they had a run like this where they would do sh like interesting stuff. And then it became like goth. Once the hot topic, once the hot topic was like a distribution outlet, they just, you had to do it. That's the numbers were so did. big, like yeah, but like none you of could that not connected. do it. Zero of it connected. It was just Joan and Vasquez. What connected a bank account? Like no, you're selling. They, uh, they weren't in there. Like like like. Joan and Vasquez was in it was in Hot Topic. They created stuff for the option of Hot Topic to carry that stuff. They didn't carry any of that other shit. 
All the other stuff was like uh, just a wreck market. What, um, else, what else made it to Hot Topic? I don't know. I've only been in Hot yeah, Topic yeah, twice and never saw any books. Um, Matt Wagner cover. The color is real sick. I love I love the uh, that weird flesh tone. It's very weird. I was looking at this cover and enjoying it quite a bit because like, I was looking at it with the screen tones again behind it. And then if you look close, it's like these blue squares are on top. I'm not even positive exactly how you build that. You have like your dry brush or an airbrush or something doing your color transitions. I think this is all Matt Wagner. Like he's doing that blue color and everything. Like that's a pretty sweet cover. I love this part where it's blue and orange for your logo and the background is like a dark desaturated orange. Yeah, it's, it's color 101. Yeah, it's all that stuff. Uh, do you see a, a, a shadow? Like is it cut out paper? I don't know. I don't see a shadow line, but it's tight against like... The way it's tied against those dots make me think that it is a, uh, a piece of paper put yeah, on top. Yeah, or something. like on this side, I feel like I, I just don't want to get in the camera, but I feel like I, there's could be a shadow there. There's a little bit of green, so it's like a uh, blue yellow overprint. So I don't know the in, ins and outs, but I feel like it's a really attractive cover, and I uh, was surprised to learn that it's all Matt Wagner. Yeah, genius man. I love these chunky brushes, man. Chunky ass brush strokes. It's, it's it's like that stuff that like you know that's the first lines you put on the page or something. Yep. Sick. You good? Yep. K Favors like follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, man? Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness is available now in comic shops everywhere. Two 40 page oversized issues retelling the origin of the Incredible Hulk. The Treasury Edition collection will be out in January. You can pre order that one now wherever you buy comics. Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Alive, back in print from Image Comics. Eight complete full color stories in that one. And you can join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg to see a lot more of my comics and art. Red Room Trigger Warnings. Red Room, the anti-social network, are in stores as we speak. Murder on a Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Each book contains four issues of comics, four complete stories. And you can order, pre-order those comics at my link tree in the description below this video. At that same link tree, go to my Patreon. And for three bucks, you get all of this material on the Patreon. Plus, I'm serializing new strips every Tuesday. Uh, make sure you get your hands on that. You can read these comics before they hit paper. Three bucks, easy value. Uh, what else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, fanny packs, and more at our spread shop in the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, Jimmy, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.